All right, my name's Matt. Uh, I'm going to give you a 10 minute talk, about a uh, 15 minute talk about developing your way out of any problem. I'm going to read my own slides because uh, they're not nearly as detailed as Kent's. Um, so, yeah, a bit about me. My name's Matt. Uh, previously worked at a bunch of startups, one called Official Community with friend Grant here. Um, then I went, I worked at Chum, CTV, so kind of Chum was a smaller company, CTV was a massive company with Dave, wherever he is. I got people from all, I'm going to give them shout outs. Uh, then I uh, worked at Scribble Live, I don't know how many people have heard of Scribble Live, but there's a lot of people, to, yeah, that's all of them. Uh, uh, Scribble Live started, I was the first employee there. Uh, now Scribble Live has maybe a hundred, maybe more offices all over the place. You know, one of those success stories. Uh, and now I work on my own thing called Sam. So it's just me, another developer, and a couple friends that help us out. So that's kind of my experience: developer, front-end developer, dev manager, product manager, product marketer, QA, sports, sales engineer. Anybody that's worked at a tiny company, you know that you do everything, uh, anything that needs to be done. So. Uh, what I want to tell you about today is that people who write code are super smart people with a whole bunch of really valuable skills. Uh, hopefully you guys in this room agree. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, everybody that I know who writes code knows that they're super smart uh, and they know that they have a whole bunch of really valuable skills, but uh, it's come to my attention over the years, especially now working on my own thing, just me and one other developer, a friend of mine, um, that those skills are often segregated within the dev team. So, uh, especially when a company gets to like a medium size, uh, it's kind of like developers work on the product, uh, they write code for the product, and then marketing's over there, sales is over there, growth is over there, uh, and there, it might be siloed. Hopefully it's not like that at your company, that would be excellent, but my experience is that that happens an awful lot, and uh, not just when I'm in charge. Wait. Um, so. All right, so the first lesson that, that uh, I want to, I kind of want to inspire you guys to write code or to have your developers uh, write code that helps test ideas. So it's not necessarily the main product. For example, the product that I work on, my own thing is called SAM. Uh, SAM is a random anonymous chat app. Uh, I don't recommend any of you use it. It's mostly teens <laughs> doing what teens do when it's random and anonymous. Um, <laughs> I didn't say the word so you couldn't tweet it, all right? <laughs> it's sexting. Um, so, so when we wanted to write, when we, when we thought about creating Sam, we thought, hey, a random anonymous chat app, sort of like, think about message boards from back when you were younger. Um, that was awesome, we enjoyed that. We wondered how we could bring that into sort of the new, whatever, Web 3.0 we're on. Uh, but we didn't know how to write uh, mobile apps. We're not iOS developers, we're not Android developers, but what we did know was how to use Twilio. Uh, so we ended up creating an SMS app, you just text it, we didn't have to create any UI and we could launch it immediately, put some Facebook dollars behind that. Um, I know that sounds like you are developing the product, but it was our MVP, it was a very early MVP. Uh, we whipped it up in literally an hour and then went and had a drink. And then we had way more users than we thought we would get off those Facebook, first Facebook ads and uh, sort of Sam was born. So writing code to test ideas is extremely important even if you have a product that already exists, you have ideas that you want to test for how to, uh, how to further the product. Um, we did some things at Scribble Live. Scribble Live was an established product. It was all on all the major news organizations, Little Embed, it's a live publishing platform, live blogging, if you're not familiar with it. Um, but we wanted to test uh, the ability to, or not the ability, but the appetite for customization. We kind of knew it was there, but we didn't know how best to do it. So I spent a few nights, because I'm not a great developer, uh, writing a really tight JavaScript, uh, uh, what's it called, like a, an embed. You just put a piece of JavaScript code on your page and it, uh, it just pulls from our API and you can customize it infinitely. Turns out that that was uh, very necessary and we ended up productizing it. I can't remember what they call it now, that was years ago. Sorry, not even a year ago, but to me it was years ago. Um, so. So we kind of use that as an MVP in an already established company to, to prove the idea that people wanted more customization so much that they would write their complete own CSS rather than using our customizable embed. Um, so yeah, some ideas, if you can write code, if, if you can write code to help the product team uh, test new ideas before actually putting that code into the main product, 
you can get things done a lot quicker, you can prove concepts, and you can make a much bigger impact on the bottom line. Next thing, I feel like I'm going super fast. Feel free to tell me to slow down. No one's nodding, okay, I'll keep going. Um, write code that helps make decisions. So this is a huge one for us. These are real graphs from Sam. Uh, we realized that we are two developers with a bit of product experience from Scribble Live that don't know anything about getting people to use a mobile app. So uh, the best thing that we could think to do was create a massive Google Doc. It didn't start massive, it started as one thing, but we knew how to hack APIs. Oh, it's louder, is that better? Too loud? Um, so one thing we knew how to do was hack APIs. So, or not hack, hack with APIs. So we mashed up a bunch of APIs. You can tell on some of these, there's three lines. What are those lines? Who cares? But some of them are cost, some of them are retention, some of them are DAO, some of them are MAO, that's daily active users, monthly active users. Uh, this bottom right one for you guys, that's the same for me, that's two lines, is, uh, those are our goals. So my partner Jonathan has one goal and I have one goal and those lines are supposed to go up. His is going up much faster than mine because he's much smarter than me, but um, something like that can help your marketing team immensely. So your marketing team, your sales team, everybody else has a lot of trouble measuring things in my experience. There's a lot of apps, they're trying constant apps, $500 a month apps, $1,000 a month apps that um, are supposed to help them measure things, but those apps don't really talk to each other. So if you can mash up 10 APIs into one uh, Google spreadsheet, Google Sheets is amazing at APIs, you can write full on code in there and it's super powerful. Um, we even make it so that we have one variable at the top of our spreadsheet that we change it and it breaks the cache and reloads everything. So all we do is we go in, we change the one to a two, hit enter and it updates the spreadsheet real time. And we know exactly how many new users we're getting. Uh, we know exactly how much we're spending on SMS costs. Um, we know exactly, you know, 10 different things that we know just from one thing. And that's in insanely hard for a regular product to do. Um, because those products are all siloed, they don't talk to each other, so you could kind of picture a marketing person looking at Twitter, is this, are these, are, is the money I'm spending on Twitter working, is the money I'm spending on Facebook working, and they're just kind of looking back and forth between all these apps with all these different numbers and nothing makes sense. If you can help them synthesize it, this literally only takes a few hours for a good developer to mash up an API um, and give your marketing team some insight. And that really helps because at the end of the day, uh, if you're, if you can make the best product you want, but if you're not helping, if your marketing team's not able to execute, and it's not because they're stupid, it's because they need your skills to help them uh, use the app, then what's the point of even making the app? So write code that helps make decisions. Uh, write code that helps lower costs. These pictures here uh, seem a little weird. I don't know why I made them black and white. Uh, but what these, uh, so Sam, I said that we leveraged Twilio and SMS really picked off, or took off. Um, so lots of kids uh, have no problem texting a number. If I told you guys probably text this weird number, you're gonna be like, can I just download an app? But kids do not wanna download an app. Uh, they don't have data for a lot of them. We're talking about 13 to 17 year olds, so their parents aren't like, no, you're not getting unfettered access to the internet. You're not having data. Uh, so you can have Wi-Fi when you're in the home. But for the most part, they don't have data, even in the US where data is plentiful. Uh, they don't have room on their phones, so they don't have great phones. They have like the cheapest free phones for the most part. So um, a lot of apps, uh, they have a lot of apps and they, they don't have room on their phones. So SMS still exists for us. We use it as onboarding. You're allowed to have five uh, conversations via SMS. Twilio is expensive as hell. We were spending $1,200 a day at the peak on Twilio and we don't have any funding. Uh, don't judge us, it's a good product. Um, but <laughs> so we were spending $1,200 a day on Twilio. These phones are, we call them burner phones because it sounds cool, we feel like we're drug dealers or mafia in the mafia or something like that. Really what they are is uh, $20 a month free texting phones. Uh, we wrote code, Jonathan wrote code, he's a genius, he's not here. Um, <laughs> You probably want to talk to the genius, though, you the dev deal, right? You got me instead. All right, so uh, these phones, there's the five in the top are in Florida. That's our U.S. phone base. Uh, the ones on the bottom are in my kitchen right now. See little sunglasses there right beside them? <laughs> Those are in my kitchen right now. They run Canada. So we basically created our own Twilio on these really cheap phones, and our costs are now $100 a day. We still use Twilio a bit for advertising because it's more stable instead of $1,200 a day. So, um, 
write code that helps lower costs. I know at Scribble Live we did a ton of this. Some of the people that did it are here, but we used to ha joke hashtag margin margins in Slack all the time. Uh, and every single thing that we could do, especially when you're at scale, like a bigger company, uh, or even a smaller company, um, especially when you're at scale, every single little thing you can do, like it might not be as, as uh, sexy and glorious, but if you can save a dollar, you're saving that dollar, and that dollar, then you can use it to negotiate a raise or something like that, uh, if your company's bigger. So, write code that helps lower costs. It's not always about just writing code for the product, not always about, but optimizing things, writing code, uh, being an AWS expert can really help, and it, it's not, yeah, right, it's not as sexy as like if you're at Facebook creating the new Facebook t news feed that everybody's gonna use, uh, but saving a dollar here and there really helps, uh, especially at the kind of companies that we probably all work at. Um, no, not your company. No. They have a lot of, this company has a lot of money. Um, <laughs> and then finally, write code that makes your product better. So. Uh, in the background there, I have a picture of our Google reviews, 3.9. That might not seem that great at a five, but for us it's amazing, especially when you have the type of app that we have. Uh, but we didn't know, uh, we, were, we weren't Android developers, and so it was the first time this developer had ever made an Android app. Uh, we put Rollbar on there, and we had a ton of errors, and everybody was complaining, but if you look, so far so good, hey, it's good, but I met uh, a girl on there. And then I can't find her again, because that's the whole point of the app. Uh, <laughs> I've had it for a couple days and I made a couple friends already. Those are much better if you go back and look at the reviews, they were terrible, the app was crashing all the time. So at the end of the day, you do have to write code that makes your product better, but we knew what code to write to make our product better because we had you hacked together all the data, uh, used some third-party tools to track errors, and we knew exactly, uh, and, and we listened to, we read these reviews and listened to our customers. Uh, to, to kind of figure out exactly what we should fix. So at the end of the day, it is about writing code that makes your product better, but it's also about writing code that lowers your costs, helps people make decisions, and helps test ideas. So your skills are valuable and use them to make everything better, especially when companies are really small. Some of the mistakes that I look back on were sort of siloing the dev team and not understanding why like that we have skills. You kind of, when you hang around with developers and you're a developer yourself, you think that everybody else must have critical thinking skills and problem solving skills and if they don't, they're just an idiot and they're not worth your time. Uh, but I really encourage you guys to kind of spread those skills around your company wherever you can, find everything, every, every single little place where those skills, even if it's not specifically writing code, but if it's helping your marketing team uh, connect like intercom data with uh, Facebook spend, to figure out which customers are happy and which customer, like which, which dollar, you know, just connecting two things together by matching up APIs that take you an hour is trivial, means a whole lot to the bottom line of your business and helps whatever company you work for uh, succeed uh, day to day. So, I don't know if that was long enough, I should add a timer, but uh, that's me, my name is Matt McCoslin, please come talk to me after. Uh, Email me, matt at sam.best, that's our URL, it's weird, but it's short, see how we, we did it? Sam's still short. Uh, and then my Twitter handle is at idiot banter, and that's kind of where Sam came from, because those kids are just bantering like idiots, but I've had that handle for a long time. And then a Drake reference, I don't even listen to Drake, but that video was popular. <laughs> so, is that good? I can keep going. You want me to keep going? Five minutes of stand up. Question. <laughs> questions? Can we do 10 minutes of questions? All right, we'll do 10 minutes of questions. Um, so, are you making revenue on it? Oh, on Sam? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, oh, yeah, I wanted to mention before we get into the question that uh, the whole SMS thing, I'm doing a whole talk at a mobile growth meetup. See Elizabeth if you want more info. She's waving her hands around back there. Hashtag mobile growth on Thursday, this Thursday, where I'm gonna talk a lot more about how that works and, and how that helps us. Uh, so Sam, no, we're not making revenue right now, we're just trying to grow the user base and kind of figure the whole thing out. Um, basically, we've collected a database of 400,000 conversations of teens getting to know each other. So, uh, I don't know, do you guys want me to talk all about Sam? Or hands up, okay. I'll talk a bit more about that. Um, one thing that we found early on, I guess this kind of applies, one thing that we found early on is some kids are just looking for a specific gender for a specific reason. 
some other kids, probably a minority, uh, are looking for really good conversations. Um, so we needed to figure out a way, because the Twilio costs were so high, we had to find, it, it was a waste if you were just going, uh, they say boy or girl, believe it or not, boy or girl, uh, <laughs> which I thought, and they brought ASL back, so basically, <laughs> If they, they can, yeah, it should be AGL. Some kids do use AGL. They're progressive. They're probably from the coasts of America, not in the middle. Anyway, they, uh, so, um, it basically, if you're looking for a specific gender for a specific reason, it's a waste to match you up with the wrong gender for the wrong reason. It costs us money, it gives everybody a bad experience, because with Sam, you just have a conversation and you just say next and they're gone, and you get matched up with someone else. It's very quick. It's like chat roulette, but no video. So. Um, so it was in our best interest to use some natural language processing to try and figure out how to match people up. That ends up becoming part of the product, but basically we want you to have the best conversation. So we're working on using the data that we have now, which is the 400,000 conversations and what we know about uh, teens conversing to kind of create, it might end up something like an AI that can have a really good conversation based on the ghost of 400,000 previous conversations. Uh, so that's kind of what we're doing now. So no revenue, just burning all our life savings on that um, and seeing where it goes. Yeah. Ne next question. Yeah. yeah, the marketing was interesting. We didn't know it was going to be a thing for teens at the start. So originally we were thinking, oh, let's make an AI kind of like that can answer questions for you and make your life easier. And then we were like, How? but with the AI can't know things. It can't know everything, right? We can only write so many modules to tell you the temperature and book you a restaurant or whatever. Um, so what if it doesn't know something and throws it to someone who it thinks will know that, the answer to that? And then we're like, but put you in a conversation with a random person via, like under the guise of this AI? I don't know if I'm getting out there, but it's probably why our investor meetings don't go well. But the, uh, <laughs> um, I don't usually have a microphone, that might be good. The, uh, so we were like, random anonymous conversations, that might be weird, it's kind of interesting, we talked about it for a bit, and we were like, let's just do it. So when we put the money on Facebook, Facebook marketing is amazing, you can just, or advertising, you can just go, everybody in Toronto, I'm gonna spend $10, tell them to text this number. And then it became very obvious, and Facebook even tells you, hey, this is very relevant to people 13 to 17, you're wasting money on anybody over 17. Like, it gives you that notification. So that's another thing. If you any of you have ideas and you want to try them, an MVP like this text thing and $10 on Facebook will tell you if your idea is good or not. It's amazing. Like, go home tonight and do it. Do not delay. Um, but basically, that kind of, that gave us a very clear idea of, of how to market or who to market to. And then I had to, I probably used 25 different versions of an ad. Like, I had these stock photos of, like, kids looking at their phone, having a good time or being shocked or something. They didn't care about those. The one that works are actually these... These are from our ads. They like a picture. Um, I actually used to have, just have two iPhones, and I didn't realize that kids with Android wouldn't think, like, they thought it wasn't for Android, even though it's just SMS. Because to me, I'm like, stupid, it's texting a number. How is it going to matter what phone you have? But kids just see that, and they're like, oh, that doesn't look like my phone. I don't. So I put an Android ad in there, and it got, or an Android screenshot, and an iPhone screenshot, and it went way better. Uh, this is probably my whole talk from Thursday, sorry. <laughs> it's the MVP of my talk on Thursday. It'll get better. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of how we figured it out. We, we had 20 different versions and see which one worked, and those graphs help because it's kind of hard because we're also developers and we can change so much. We change every single thing. And so, there was one point, or there have been like three points over the course of the last few months where we've been like, okay, things are going really shitty. What did we change? And we're like, okay, we changed 20 things. Which thing made it shitty? And then, trying to figure that out, we were actually trying to uh, um, advertise the app, like natively, to skip the SMS part. And that's just a waste for us. I can get someone to text the number for six cents, but it's like over two dollars to get you to download an app. I don't know why. We'll figure that out. But, um, but yeah, there's been a lot of times where, uh, where we've had to make adjustments based on all our data, but that data combing through it, like we've spent hours and hours, like. Friday at midnight trying to comb through the data, figure out what we did wrong, but because we had all that data in Google Spreadsheets and the, the ability to manipulate it, we could sort of figure out what happened um, and then go and correct it. This one that I was talking about, there's the spike there, the blue one at the top, that's when we figured it out. <laughs> so you can see that was a huge spike and then everything else grew following it. Any other questions?
another one. All right. What were the two? What are the two goals? Two goals of what? Oh, uh, blue is is uh, new users in the top right, and red is daily active users. And in the oh no, sorry, that one is uh, monthly active in the red and daily active in the blue. And yes, it goes down. Uh, but we were figuring a problem out. And then this one is uh, red is daily active and blue is new. Now I'm embarrassed I used real graphs. I should have just used them. <laughs> All right, is that it? All right, well, thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate you listening. Talk to me after if you have anything you want to ask. Thanks so much, Matt. It was a great talk. So, um, so that's all our talks for today. There's still uh, drinks and uh, maybe some food left over there, over there. So help yourself. I'm going to put up the tweet for International Women's Day. And by the way, this is not for women only, so guys, uh, you can attend and you can tweet this out and uh, get a couple of tickets. Um, so that's it, thank you so much guys, and we'll do the giveaway in half an hour, at 8.30, so.